This program is brought to you by NewsWorks in cooperation with the City of Eau Claire. This program is simulcast on WRFBLP 101.9 FM. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'd like to call the meeting to order. Um, appreciate everybody coming out today and um, um, coming here to express your opinions and, and uh, add to the debate. Uh, I'd like to start with a quick introduction. So the Planning Commission attempts to conduct its public hearings in a relatively informal manner um, within the constraints uh, that we must deal with issues in orderly and business-like fashion. We give each of the applicants an opportunity to speak first and then open it up to public hearing, um, uh, either for or against, and each, each side or whomever shows up is permitted to speak once. We do, uh, we do request that everybody uh, restrict their comments to the issues before us, avoid unnecessary repetition, and be uh, prudent in the use of time, please. Um, we want to be sure that we have adequate time to deal uh, as carefully with the last item uh, as we do with the first. All right. Um, if you would, everybody, uh, make sure your phones are off or on silent. Um, uh, anybody that plans on speaking, we've got yellow forms in the back. We'd appreciate if you'd fill those out and turn them into Ned. Um, uh, before you speak, please uh, uh, give us your name and address. Um, um, and then I guess we'll start with the first item, which is a certificate of appreciation for our former chair, Jenny Ebert. A well-deserved uh, certificate. How do we do this? We go, oh, you've got it. I've got no, a certificate. You can, you can stand there and read it, and then I can come forward when you're done. There you go. Would you like to do All right, let's do that, Jenny. <laughs> that, that's what I always found was the best. Right, we'll stick with what works then. All right. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm just taking my cues from the pro here. Uh, so we do have a certificate of appreciation for Jenny Ebert, which states, whereas Jenny Ebert has served the citizens of the city of Eau Claire as a plan commissioner since 2012, and the last two as chair, I believe, last two or three years. Two years. Last two, I think. Two years. Thank you. Um, whereas she has served as chairperson, well, since 2017, um, she's been a strong advocate for comprehensive planning, site planning, city and river front beautification, neighborhood revitalization. Whereas her professional knowledge and experience has been a keystone of the plan commission, which I think we'd all agree. Whereas her thoughtful and detailed review of development proposals has encouraged higher quality development for our community. Now, therefore, the City Plan Commission of the City of Eau Claire hereby wishes to express its appreciation, as well as the appreciation of city staff and the citizens of the city, to Ms. Jenny Ebert for her contributions, leadership, and service to the City of Eau Claire. Thank you. Photo out here. <laughs> <laughs> me. Okay. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. See you around, I hope. I'm going to miss you guys. Yeah. Take care, darling. Even if I screwed up the names every once no, in a while. Never <laughs> happen. You bet. I'm going to miss all of you guys. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Thank you. You bet. And truly, thank you, Jenny. It was a pleasure having you on the commission. Thank you. Um, so the next item is uh, new business. We've got a new member, Miss Zena Obeyed. Welcome. Um, so then on to public hearing, number, sure. item number three. Um, we've got uh, final action. Oh, this is the withdrawn item. Um, so if anybody came for the conditional um, use permit for the detached garage, um, that petition or the application was withdrawn. So we will not be hearing that tonight. Um, number four, conditional use permit for a projecting sign. Ryan. Good evening. Plan Commission, Mr. Chairperson. Good evening. Sign Art Company Incorporated on behalf of Clancy Bar is requesting a conditional use permit to allow for the installation of a projecting sign, which its height exceeds the height of the second floor windowsill of the building. Clancy Bar is located downtown and is a zone central business. The ground floor does attain the bar. The up, uh, upper floor does up attain apartments. The sign as proposed in your packet uh, is 2 by 10 or 20 square feet in size, as shown here. Also, 
It's from Google Street View. This is the current uh, sign on the building that would remain, I believe, or refacing the awning. The reason it's before the plan commission is due to the height of the uh, projecting sign. It is above the second floor windowsill. Uh, the sign code is noted in your report. Staff has concluded that the height of the sign is compatible with the scale and design of the building. This is a similar proposal that the plan commission did approve for Brothers Tavern on Water Street in 2016. Staff would recommend approval of the request in relation to the height of the building, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. All right, thank you. Anybody have any questions for Ryan? Mr. Craker. I see it's described as a cabinet sign um, with two exterior faces. Does that mean it's lit from the interior or not lit? That is correct. It will be lit. It is lit. Yes. Okay. Any additional question, Mr. Peterson? From the interior? That is correct. <laughs> any other questions? I don't see any. Just oh, I'm sorry, sir. Terry. Thank you. Uh, any conversations or comments from the neighbor? that you're aware of? We did notify within 300 feet of the property. We have not heard. Um, I know the applicant is here. He might have contacted, but I'm not 100% sure. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, I guess that's it. Is the applicant here? Would you like to come forward and? Sure. Thanks. Yeah. And name good, and address, Good please. evening. Uh, Matt Snyder. 1035 Thompson Drive, Altoona. <coughs> Thanks. Um, anything you'd like to add or any questions or comments on the staff report? Um, I think Ryan hit it on the head, kind of. You know, I think it's real similar to the sign at Brothers on Water Street. Uh, I think the area is about the same, height's about the same. So Just looking for approval on this, I guess. Wonderful. Um, any questions? Or, oh, Ryan. Or Jeremy, I'm sorry. Ryan, it's okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I guess, what are some of the other signs that you've designed? I really think it's an amazing design. I, oh. I guess I was wondering um, if you have some other examples that you'd like to share with us that have that you've done in the city already that, um, are, that are of this style or just, uh, in terms of the vertical. Sure. We've done uh, ambient inks on Water Street. It's also a projecting sign that we did. Um, ECDC and uh, the informalist at the Lismore Hotel, a couple other projecting signs that we did. Um, those are just three that come to mind, I guess. Okay. Any other questions? I miss anybody. All right. I guess not. Um, thanks. Okay. Thank you. Um, we uh, do have a public hearing here, so if anybody would like to uh, come forward and um, discuss the item, um, now would be the time. See anybody coming forward? Uh, again, it's a public hearing. Um, anybody would like to come forward? So, uh, not seeing anybody. I guess we're looking for a motion. I would move approval <coughs> of the uh, sign. Excuse me. I'll second. All right, we got a motion and a second. Uh, discussion. All right, not seeing any. Let's call the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. I don't see any. Approved. Um, next item. We have a uh, full recommendation final plat for 19th Street edition. Mr. Petrie. American Land Surveying is requesting a approval for the final plat for 19th Street edition located on 19th Street north of Cameron Street. Uh, here is the attachment of the final plat. It creates five lots. Here's the aerial photograph. Currently it is two lots. There's a home off of Cameron Street here. And this larger lot is lot two. 19th Street is here. In your packet is the attached final plat. It creates five lots for single family development. The home does stay, and that will create one lot, lot number five on the plat. Four other lots will be created. 19th Street will be extended into a cul-de-sac bulb for four more lots. All uh, utility easements are shown. Also note, 
from uh, 19th Street to the south, there would be a utility easement for a city sewer uh, for city water extended to Cameron Street. The final plat is consistent with the preliminary plat as approved by the Planning Commission on March 5th, 2018. Staff would recommend approval of the request. This item will be considered by the plan, or City Council at its June 12th meeting. I'd be happy to answer any questions. All right. Any questions for Mr. Petrie? Uh, I'm not seeing any. Thanks. All right, we do have a public hearing, so if there's anybody that'd like to um, come forward. Oh, I'm sorry, applicant. My gosh. Is the applicant here, sir? <laughs> Thank you. Paul Holsinger, 704 Mitchell Avenue, Eau Claire. I'm the uh, developer of the subdivision. Um, just, think uh, I think it's a good spot. I think they're nice sized lots. Uh, the smallest one will be about 80 by 130. Um, the rest of the, the remaining three lots, that's lot one. Uh, the other lots are larger lots. I think they'll fit well with the neighborhood. Um, I think it'll be a, a nice addition to the city. Happy to answer any other questions you might have. Wonderful. Uh, any questions for the applicant? I'm um, not seeing any. Uh, thanks. Let me off easy. Thanks, guys. Yeah, appreciate it. Um, all right, now uh, it is public hearing, so if you'd like to come forward, sir. Hello. Uh, Hi. Name my and name address, is, please. Uh, John Qualheim. My wife Betty and I currently live at 1226 Vine Street. We are considering buying lot one. Uh, but my question is, is it just curb and gutter? Is it curb gutter sidewalk? Is it curb gutter boulevard sidewalk? I, I couldn't tell from this. Um, Brian, did you want to answer that? The developer may know the answer. I don't know if there's sidewalk on 19th Street existing. Um, there is? Okay. I would defer that to the applicant. Okay. All right. Thanks. <laughs> Sorry, Paul. That's okay. Um, there, is, there is sidewalk that goes down 19th Street, I believe, on both sides of the street. You can just barely see it on that aerial. That light colored line there I think is our sidewalk um, John is interested probably in lot one of the conversation has come up about whether we should require sidewalk in the cul-de-sac or do we dead end the sidewalk I'm gonna slide this up here or do we dead end the sidewalk right there and here so you could cross the street otherwise we have this sidewalk and the question came up about snow removal and I don't know if this is the correct spot to bring that up or if that's um you know an engineering question or a city council question or what so i'm, I'm looking for your input as well as as john thanks ryan in the end Sorry. it is city council's determination um the applicant can defer sidewalks and then council would have to approve that request okay i guess we'll have to discuss that when we get get the motion but i think I guess to me it looks like they're on all the streets there, so I mean, consistency is important. But well, there are several cul-de-sacs within a half mile of this development that are nothing but curb and gutter. This okay. sidewalk down both sides of 19th dead ends there now. Sidewalk in the cul-de-sac really leads nowhere. Doesn't lead to a school. Doesn't lead to a school crossing. Doesn't lead to a pedestrian crossing. Mail delivery is not an issue. It's curbside delivery there. If it is, if this is proposed as curb abutting sidewalk, you have that snow removal issue there. All of it piled up on the sidewalk. It uh, affects our decision, certainly. Um, okay. And your preference would be no sidewalk? Curb and gutter only, absolutely. Okay. Put the snow on the lawn. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank you. Sir. Just a quick just a quick question. Where maybe Ryan can help me answer this too, but what would be the property proper procedure to follow up on that for this gentleman for the rest of that development? Are we proving the plat as it's laid out now? And then we would treat each individual lot 
or the plat as a whole to defer sidewalk? Um, what help, it, help me in this one? Yeah, I think Ryan's probably going to tackle this. Thank you. So this will be a two item. I guess I should have explained it a little better. It was going to be a two piece item on the council agenda on June twelfth. The plat will go forward okay. as shown. The developer agreement will be through the engineering department. At that time, they will talk about deferral of a sidewalk okay. or curb and gutter or not. Do you need our motion to discuss that, or is that a completely separate item? That That's typically a, a separate item at council. Those, this will be the first item okay. the council will review, and then the developer agreement will be the second item for the street, curb and gutter, sidewalk. Okay. So this is not our issue. This is to, that ours is, is a plat, and that will be discussed by council. That is okay. correct. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, did anybody have any questions for the last presenter? All right. Um, it is a public hearing. If there's anybody else that would like to come forward, now would be your opportunity. I'm not seeing any, so I think we're looking for a motion. I'll move approval. Yes, I, I will second it. All right. Any discussion? I'm not seeing any, so let's call the question. All those in favor, um, we've got a public hearing final, um, let's see, for recommendation final plat. So all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? All right, motion carries uh, for recommendation to the city council. Good luck. All right, next item, uh, Trillium Estates phase two. Mr. Petrie. American Land Surveying is requesting a final plat approval for Trillion Estates Phase 2, located east of 93 on the north side of Double I in the town of Washington. The reason why we're reviewing it is because it's in the ETJ, which is three miles outside the city limits where you review plats. Attached to your packet is the final plat for the subdivision. The current property is zone C3, according to the county. The property is partially outside the sewer service area, the SSA. Under the terms of the agreement, uh, they would be allowed a density of one per two acres outside, and then one inside it would be one per 10 acres. I have this aerial photograph, which it contains the existing, this is off the county website. Stansone Road is proposed to be connected here, so that would create another lot there. Uh, currently it is three lots, one lot here, two, and three. Uh, with the extension of the Sandstone Road, that would create the additional lot. This plat is to reconfigure the lots and is consistent with the density standards of the town agreement between the town of Washington and the city of Eau Claire. For the request, the county will review the, the feasibility of septic systems and wells for the property. The town of Washington will review the plat determine consistency with their comprehensive plan. Uh, staff would recommend approval of the request and I would be happy to answer any questions. All right, any questions for Mr. Petrie? I do appreciate his clarifying the sanitary sewer system. That was on my to-do. Uh, any questions for Ryan? I don't see any. Is the uh, applicant here? Howdy, I'm Jeremy Scow. I'm just, I'm uh, 14013 46th Avenue in Chippewa Falls. I'm just a surveyor. I'm not the, the landowner, but Ryan, Ryan hit it on the head. What uh, I guess what my client's trying to uh, to do, and eventually, I think by just kind of speculating. But yeah, these will remain as the C3 lots and just be uh, um, just be as sold as commercial lots. So, all right. Um, any questions for Jeremy? I'm not seeing any. Um, and this this is so this is probably step one, right? You got city council next, and Correct. then the county county and town probably too. Correct. Yep. Okay. All right. I'm not seeing any questions. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, it is a public hearing, so if there's anybody that would like to uh, discuss this item, um, this is your opportunity. I'm uh, not seeing any, so we would be looking for a motion. Uh, I'll move to approve. Second. All right, uh, we've got a motion and a second. Any discussion? All 
on it. Uh, I don't see any, so call the question. All those in favor of uh, recommendation of Trillium Estates Phase Two Final Plat, say aye. 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 And opposed. All right. Congratulations. Good luck. All right. Next item uh, for recommendation: Excess Land, London Road. Now Ryan's getting a break, huh? <laughs> All right, this parcel was acquired in 1995 and it remain, uh, it's what remains after CSM was done along London Road and Damon Street. The parcel is approximately 6,053 square feet. The parcel is too small to be developed and its only value is to the adjacent property owner. Um, this request is for the plan commission to recommend to the city council that the section of parcel be declared excess land and available for sale. Any questions? Okay. Any questions? So this is um, the city's applicant. Is this a public? Oh, I'm sorry, Jeremy. Real quick. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I guess I had a question about, do you have like an aerial view of, of the, um, okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So is it, so is it all trees there basically? Yeah. It's all wooded? Okay. I guess that's my only question. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Allen, so are we looking, f is this public hearing then or is this just for review and discussion? Uh, this is public hearing and it would be a recommendation to city council. Okay. Yeah. So um, any other questions? I'm sorry. Um, I'm not seeing any, thanks. Uh, since it is a public hearing, um, this would be an opportunity to um, come forward and discuss. I do not see anybody here, so we'd be looking for a motion on the recommendation. I'll move approval. Second. All right, we got a motion and a second. Any discussion? All right, we'll call the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, I don't see any. Good luck. And the next one would be excess land on Platt Street. This parcel was acquired in 2002 for the realignment of 3rd Street. The city used the land necessary for the realignment and this is the remnant parcel. The parcel is about 6,376 square feet. The assessor's office estimated the value to be about 14,000. The property would be suited for affordable housing and um, this would be this is brought before you for a request for plan commission to recommend to the city council that this section be declared excess land. Thank you. So th this would then go out for sale on an RFP or, or similar process? Um, it, it is large enough, yep. Okay, okay. Any, Any questions? Mr. Peterson. In that this is on a heavily traveled corner, would there be any restriction as to where a driveway could be located? Um, that would probably be reviewed by the engineering department at that point that we would review it for sale as part of the developer agreement, but it probably would be up in the northern yeah, corner there. Yeah, that would be a good place for it. Yep. Any additional questions on this one? I don't see any. Um, so again, we got a public hearing on this one. Um, so anybody that would have any questions or comments, this would be an opportunity to come forward. And I am not seeing anybody else here. So if anybody's got comment, or uh, let's see, we'd be looking for a motion then. I move approval. I'll second. Yeah, all right, motion a second. Any um, discussion or comment? All right, I'm not seeing any, so we'll call the question. All those in favor of a recommendation, aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, I don't see any. Uh, additional recommendation, uh, three parcels on is that Acorn Drive. Welcome back. Okay. Um, Eau Claire County has taken the three parcels in blue here on Acorn Drive. Um, by tax deed. The parcels um, are not, as stated in the report, they state that it's landlocked. They are not landlocked. There's actually an easement that runs through, up through here into the properties um, <clears throat> that could be developed should the town of Washington agree 
um, if the adjacent property owners were to agree to the driveway to be put in. Um, the adjacent property owners are not looking to have a road put in at this time. Um, the back taxes and recording fees on the parcel are estimated to be $4,200. Staff believes that the property should be acquired for future development. Um, it is believed that eventually an annexation would occur, at which point the cul-de-sac or a version of it could be built. Um, looking for the plan commission to make a recommendation for the acquisition to the city council. Okay. So sounds a little different. Um, so anybody, any questions? Mr. Peterson. There's an existing <laughs> easement coming up from the, is that Hamilton Avenue? Yep. In the south? Correct. And the existing easement, is that for roadway or just? Yep, that would be for, it is for a road. Okay. So. Yep, so it's undeveloped though at this point. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Interesting. Any additional questions? I'm not seeing any. Thanks. Thank you. Um, we do have a public hearing here, so if there's anybody that'd like to come forward and discuss. I'm not seeing anybody, so we'll be looking for a motion. I'll move recommendation to the city council for acquisition. Second. second. Okay. Um, discussion. All right. I'm not hearing any. So uh, we'd be looking to call the question. All those in favor of recommending um, acquisition? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Good luck. All right. Another um, we got Monte Carlo Drive. It's a pretty good lot since last one. Yeah. <clears throat> Sorry. The city owns a parcel along Monte Carlo Drive located here. Um, it's where we house a booster station. The city has, was approached by the property owner to the north um, inquiring if we would acquire the property. The city believes that the additional space would be nice for the driveway for the booster lift station. This might be a better picture. The driveway is located here. It would give us additional space for the booster station. Um, the, purchase pr the purchase price would be a dollar. Um, I'm looking for the plan commission to make recommendation to the city council for the acquisition. Oh, sounds great. Okay. Uh, any questions? Mr. Peterson. When I tried to find this, I couldn't find any Monte Carlo Drive. I found a North Monte Carlo Drive. Is, is that the legal name of the road or is it Monte Carlo Drive? It's, it's Monte Carlo. Okay. Monte Carlo right? Google Maps shows North Monte Carlo, oh, okay. and I couldn't see the lift station on there. But what's the side street that comes off of there? Do you know? Mm. The one on the map? <laughs> Vienna Terrace. Vienna Terrace. <laughs> It'd be very helpful to have a side street so we could find this. Yep. So, thank you. Any additional comments or questions? I have not seen any, thanks. Thank you. Um, this is a public hearing. If there's anybody, anybody would like to come forward to discuss? I'm not seeing any, uh, so we'll be looking for a motion. I move the recommendation to the city. Okay. Second. All right, thank you. Um, so any discussion? All right, I'm not seeing any. So let's call the question. All those in favor of recommendation? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Item number 11, um, our Garden Street. Okay. The city owns the parcel um, located at the property address of 860 Garden Street, which was acquired in 1985. Currently, there is platted, unconstructed um, lots in the wooded area to the north of that parcel. The outlots, um, the outlot of the platted street suggests that at some point in the future, the platted street would bend to the south and connect to the Garden Street through 1860. Uh, the proposed right-of-way dedication would allow for that. I have a couple additional maps. This is the unplatted area. The right up here. We believe it will come down and connect. It is stubbed for the utilities through this section. Um, and I'd be looking for the plan commission to make recommendation to the city council for to declare this as right of way. Okay. 
Great. Any questions? I'm not seeing any. Uh, thank you. All right. We have a public hearing, so if there's anybody that would like to come forward to discuss. All right. I'm not seeing any, so we're looking for a motion. I'll Mr. make a motion to re re recommend to the City Council. Okay. Second. Second. Thank you. Uh, comments, discussion? I see any. Let's call the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Good luck. All right, right away dedication, London Road. Um, this is the second piece to the London Road. Um, again, the property was acquired in 1995 and remained after the CSM was created along London Road and Damon Street. This section of parcel is located in the street, so we're looking to have it dedicated as right-of-way, more of a cleanup effort, um, looking for the plan commission to make recommendation to the city council to have it declared right-of-way. Interesting. Great. Um, any questions? I'm not seeing any. Thanks. Thank you. You guys been taking care of a lot of stuff huh, tonight. Okay. All right, we got a public hearing on this one as well. So if there's anybody here that'd like to come up forward to discuss, I am not seeing any. So let's call the question. Or I'm, I'm sorry, I need a motion. That's great. I'll move a uh, recommendation to the city council. Second. All right, we got a first and second. Um, we need uh, any discussion, comments? All right, let's go ahead and call the question. All those in favor of recommendation? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Number, what are we at? We're number 13, 1800 Piedmont, right away dedication. Should I consent to on this one? Um, this what, City of Eau Claire owns the parcel located here on the corner of Piedmont and Mars. It was acquired in May of 1953. Um, I am actually going to present it as a possibility of being declared um, excess land or a right of way dedication. I recently learned that it would make this lot unconforming and there's also a driveway located here so I'm looking to present okay. it in a different way to the City Council at, um, at the future meeting so I would be looking for the plan Commission to recommend it as um, either a dedicated as declared excess land or a dedicated as right-of-way okay um, Mr. Allen are we allowed to do that without public hearing or are we do we have flexibility on that in this case that's uh, certainly within your rights to do so yes okay mm -hmm. so we'll need the motion to reflect that correct recommendation okay wonderful uh, any qu questions or comments on that mr. P uh, mr. Weld thank you Chair. Um, the uh, the address is sunny or Piedmont Piedmont, Piedmont. Um, and the driveway comes off of Piedmont now uh, the driveway comes off what would be Mars Avenue here. <clears throat> What's coming into the, So that driveway is servicing which house? Uh, this house. And it looks like there's another curb cut in the driveway. Potentially here, yep. I don't know if they did a... So if the address is Piedmont, and Mars, I mean, that driveway is probably not meant to be for that house. Is that based on the address? But there's a curb cut there. Correct. And it's through the city property, so technically it shouldn't be there. Thank you. Mr. Peterson. When when it goes to the city council, I think it'd be important for the, the city engineer's office to to weigh in on this. Yeah, they did. In that the access has, is on the inside of a curve. Yep. Sight distance in there is very, very important. Mm -hmm. Right now it comes perpendicular to Piedmont, but if they were to go straight through, then um, it'd, be, it'd be nice that they have vision triangles at that corner. Right. Okay. Wonderful. Any additional questions? All right, I'm not seeing any. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> we do have a public hearing, so if there's anybody here that'd like to uh, come forward and discuss. I'm not seeing any. Um, so we'd be looking for a motion. I'll move a uh, recommendation to the City Council as both dedicated right away or excess land. Second. Excellent. Um, any discussion on that? All right, I'm not seeing any. So let's uh, call the question. All those in favor of the recommendation, say aye. 
All right. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Good luck. Number 14, uh, 3166 Anderson. Welcome back. Uh, the city owns a parcel at 3166 Anderson Drive, which was acquired in August of 1948. The proposed right-of-way dedication would allow for modifications to the intersection at a future date. Um, I would be looking for a request from the plan commission to recommend to the city council to declare it right-of-way. Right, excellent. Um, any questions? I don't think so on this one. Thank you. We have a public hearing, so if there's anybody that would like to come forward, that would be your opportunity. And I am not seeing any, so if be looking for a motion. Mr. Peters. I'll make a motion to recommend to the city council. Excellent. That it be uh, dedicated this right away. Right away. Thank you. I'll second. Right. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, any discussion? I see any. So let's uh, call the question. Uh, those in favor of recommendation, uh, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Great. Now let's skip forward to number 16. Uh, right away, uh, dedication uh, 222 Platt Avenue. Uh, there's one right before that, two for Western. I think it got missed on. Oh, did I? Anderson. Platt. There's no, there's no 15 on here. Oh. Do we skip Anderson? No, no. Printer error on my part, probably. No, it wasn't on mine either. Okay. Anyway. I believe we found your uh, mysterious we missed, black yeah, there's our 15, missing right? number 15. There we go. Mr. Chair. I didn't see it on mine either. Um, Do you need that? It, it is in is the, it in the agenda packet, packet the but agenda? it's not right. on the agenda cover sheet. Gotcha. So I apologize for the omission there. No, that's all right. I'm going on off the sheet. Thanks. For recommendation, right away, dedication, Western Avenue. All right. All right. Thanks. Okay. The city owns a parcel of number 11024-A, which is located along Western Avenue. The property was conveyed in February of 1997 from the DOT. The proposed right-of-way dedication would be for a potential future sidewalk. Um, I'd be looking for a recommendation from the city council to declare this as right-of-way. And I do have aerial photos. This one gets more up close. There's the parcel. Any questions? Yeah, looks great. Uh, any questions? Uh, well, I'm not seeing any. Thanks. Thank you. Public hearing. Um, Anybody would like to come forward to discuss uh, Western Avenue? Not seeing any. So we'll be looking for a motion um, for recommendation, right away dedication on Western Avenue. So moved. I'll second. All right, we've got a motion and a second. Any discussion? All right, I'm not seeing any. Uh, Eric, any discussion items on Western? No. All right, welcome back. All right, no, no, you're fine. Um, so let's call the question. Those in favor of the recommendation, uh, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Now we'll hit 16. Uh, Platt Avenue. Dedication uh, right away. Uh, yeah, that's funny. All right. And this is the remainder section of the Platt parcel. Um, which again was acquired in 2002 for the realignment of 3rd Street. The proposed right-of-way dedication would be for the section of the property currently in the road, um, from the road to the sidewalk. I do have some aerial photos. This would be from the sidewalk out to the road. And again, right in here, out. I'd be looking for the plan commission to make recommendation to the city council to declare that section as right of way. All right, sounds great. Um, any questions? I'm not seeing any. Thanks. Is this your last one tonight? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All right, we've got a public hearing um, on the recommendation. Um, so if there's anybody that'd like to come forward, uh, I'm not seeing anybody. So I guess we're looking for a motion. 
I move recommendation for becoming right away. Thanks. Second. All right, we got a motion and a second. Uh, any discussion on the item? All right, I'm not seeing any, so let's call the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, thank you. And um, now we're on to uh, number 17, which is site plan approval for outdoor storage. Yes, sir, Glass. Come back, Mr. Petrie. Esther Glass is requesting approval of a site plan to allow for outdoor storage in Gateway Northwest Industrial Park. Uh, this is an amendment to the 2007 up, uh, site plan that was approved for the site. As noted in your report, uh, there's a site plan, the provisions below in the paragraph, and also a, a aerial, um, I guess, a elevation showing the L-shaped shed. This L-shaped shed would be have, um, I guess it's I'm not 100 percent sure of the material, but the applicant is here. Um, but it would have all three sides would be enclosed. The only side that would not be enclosed would be the eastern portion. Uh, here's an aerial photograph of the site. It's the uh, L-shaped shed is going to go here. The site plan shows 11 by 105 square foot, or 1,155 square foot L-shaped shed enclosed on three sides with an overall height of 19.6. The shed addition is for storage of glass and other materials for the site. The site plan shows the uh, new structure located west of the building in an existing paved area of the parking lot. The general development plan for Gateway Northwest Industrial Park notes that non-building uh, site materials, such as uh, materials, supplies, or products, shall be stored outside, shall be fully screened with a wall, fence, or suitable screen approved as part of that site plan. As noted, uh, when I visited the site, this portion of the shed actually is visible, potentially visible from Fortune Tile Drive. Uh, there's a cell tower site right here, and there's some grade change. Uh, and staff uh, believes that if you're heading down the street, you would be able to see a structure there, uh, and that side would be open. Um, and that's the eastern side of the proposed shed. Um, would be visible not only from the neighboring, but also from the street potentially. Staff would make the recommendation that evergreen plantings as a suitable screen along the eastern property line located here. Uh, no other outdoor storage shall be approved unless the plan commission reviews it. The gateway board met on May 15th and indicated that they would support the plan commission's decision tonight. Staff would recommend again the, the evergreen plantings as a suitable screen with the development, general development plan, the commission should approve the site plan and add the condition no other storage shall be approved unless the plan commission reviews it. I would be happy to answer any questions. Yeah, excellent, thank you. Um, did the evergreens, uh, were that, was that discussed with the applicant? Or are they supportive? Uh, not at this point. Okay, thanks. Any questions for Ms. Petrie? Commissioner Peterson. Where did the term L-shaped shed come from? This looks more like an I-shaped shed. <laughs> uh, that is the terminology that they used, okay. uh, as noted on this plan. Okay. Uh, would you also recommend evergreens along the south property line since it can be seen from the properties from the south? Um, that, that would have a... That's an interesting one. I'm not 100% sure. It's L-shaped, but I believe it's screened on three sides. The applicant may be able to explain that better. Okay. I could, Mr. Mr. Chairman, um, I think L-shape is more inverted L. Okay. <laughs> so it's a term of art, much like pole shed is not truly a pole shape. But uh, L-shed is, again, kind of term of art, an inverted L, so it's open. Essentially, it's just open on that... Um, Primarily on that side you're seeing here, the eastern side, as Mr. Petrie mentioned, but also potentially on the ends to some degree as well. But I believe the applicant is proposing more of that to be kind of have some returns on there, so it's not totally open on the north and south either, but more just on the east. 
Thank you. Does that help? That Peterson? explains that. But since it can be seen from the east, from the properties to the east, not necessarily just Fortune Drive, you are recommending that we put, require that we put in some pine plantings or, or on the east property line. The openness of the outdoor storage can also be seen from the south, pro the property south of them too. So there probably should be pine plantings along the south property line. Yes, that would be the Planning Commission's decision. Now there is some elevation change here. At as I was out at the site, uh, there is a great change of elevation here. Up or down? Uh, it's up and then well slopes down to the site. It slopes down to the site. So th this down. site's higher to the south than the northern site. Okay, so it's more visible from there than actuality. In that they're higher, they can look down on it. Potentially. Okay. Thank you, Ryan. Any additional questions for Mr. Petrie? Okay, I'm not seeing any. Thank you. Is the applicant here? Thanks I'm, for sticking around. <laughs> no problem. Number 17. Um, <laughs> I'm Cindy Clink, E4865 Interlochen Boulevard in Oliva, and I'm the president of Esser Glass. Um, it, it, you are correct. In, it does have a roof. The ends are enclosed, and the back is all enclosed. And it's enclosed with um, steel, which will match the existing building on site. Okay. Um, and your thoughts on the evergreen? Idea? Um, it, there is quite a bit of a slope in the back, and it's unused space. The building that's behind our building. There you go. This is really unused space here. This building is here, and then it's really unusable grade that has a significant slope to it. So the storage shed is on a much lower grade. Okay. Um, any questions for the applicant? Mr. Wallach. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, outdoor lighting? Any lighting in regards to the storage? That um, we do have some outdoor lighting on the building, but there really wasn't an, an intent to light the storage shed. The storage area? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Commissioner Redholt. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, just so, just so we're clear, I just want to make sure you're okay with the evergreen screen as recommended we're, by staff. But yep, we are willing to plant the evergreens okay. if thank you if that's requested. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, I'm not seeing any. Thank you. Well, we do have a public hearing. If there's anybody here, um, now your opportunity to speak. And I'm not seeing anybody else here, so I guess we're looking for a motion. I'll move approval based upon staff recommendations. With the second, evergreens. yeah, with yeah. the with the evergreens as as uh, recommended by staff. Thanks. Second. second. Okay. Thank you. Um, discussion on this item. Okay. I'm uh, I'm not seeing any. So let's call the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Not seeing any. Thank you. And um, looks like we're on to number eighteen. Discussion and direction. We got code compliance items. Mr. Allen, anybody with code? So, Mr. Allen, what were we looking for on code compliance items? Uh, you know, this is something where we have concerns in the community. Sure, Mr. Chair. Uh, this is, yeah, exactly an opportunity should you have noticed anything, especially driving around reviewing all 17 individual sites. <laughs> uh, if you noticed driving, walking, cycling, what have you, uh, around the, the neighborhoods, your neighborhood, or any of these sites as well. Uh, sometimes it comes up that you notice uh, some code issues perhaps and had questions or concerns that you wanted to address here more publicly. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, I don't see any there. Um, future agenda items that anybody would like to discuss? All right. Not seeing any there. Additions, corrections to the minutes. Okay. Um, Mr. Chair, I yes. should say I apologize. Uh, again, uh, apologies again for the omission of <laughs> item number 15 yeah. for some reason. I was reviewing all of our files as we were uh, speaking here, and it's located in every other version except the version that was sent out. So 
uh, we'll we'll make we'll we'll catch that for next time. Uh, something happened in the tr in the transition from Word document to PDF. Yeah, something funny. got lost in that translation, so I apologize for that omission. It, again, every, all the items well. were in the package just was missing for that cover sheet for some unknown reason. But we'll make sure that doesn't happen again. Yeah, no, you. that's great. Um, Additional corrections, I don't see any, so I guess we. Oh, sorry, Terry. Not to the minutes, but when I print it out. Eric showed me the street name showed up on the electronic version, but they don't show up on the printout version with Monte Carlo. So Just an yet issue. another digital flaw that we will make yeah, sure we correct next time. Yeah. No good, good catch. Thank you very much. So appreciate everyone's uh, yeah. patience as we work through the technology <laughs> here. Uh, this is Sorry. actually our first time uh, trying to digitize the entire packet from original digital information, if that makes sense. So instead of printing and then scanning it into a PDF, actually trying to create that, build that from the original documentation to try to make it a little bit more clear uh, with some of the information, but obviously had some errors in translation with uh, both the agenda cover sheets and then apparently printing some of those items out. So thank you for catching those and we'll, we'll give it a better shot next time. Thank you. Sounds good. I guess that, uh, that makes us adjourned. Thanks everybody. This program was brought to you by a cooperation between NewsWorks and the City of Eau Claire. A transcript of this meeting is available for the hearing impaired. It will be available within seven days of this telecast. Call 715-839-4912 or TDD 715-839-1689 or write Eau Claire City Clerk, PO Box 5148, Eau Claire, Wisconsin, 54702-5148. NewsWorks is made possible by continuing community support. If you would like to volunteer or make a donation, please contact us via phone at 715-839-5067 or online at valleymediaworks.org.